in the solid black. Why wait, Dan? It's a feature prelim. Let's go. Absolutely. We're ready. Big Lack coming out, taking the centre of the cage. Nice leg kick. McIntosh slightly taller, six foot to five ten of Fig Lack. Both these guys are looking very good at lightweight. McIntosh loves the elbows. Whether it's standing or on the ground, he'll do some serious damage. He's stopped a couple of guys with elbow strikes in his pro career. So you would think that Figlak certainly does not want to be on the ground underneath McIntosh, but something tells me this is very much going to be a battle of two strikers. Figlak chasing his man down, trying to find a home for that right hand. opponents on cage warriors two via punches and Stephen Hooper unable to come out for the third round due to damage sustained went the distance with the very durable Kieran Lister so you know he's going to want to keep that momentum up here today and for Stevie McIntosh to derail the hype train behind Figlak would be absolutely huge for his cage warriors career good work to move off the cage there from the major. Yeah, McIntosh is really enjoying these inside leg kicks. You can see the welt on the inside of the left leg. It's Figlak already. I mean, there's plenty of meat there. The hit, isn't there? Both of these guys are uh, well put together, but that's certainly proving to be the main target for McIntosh early on. Nice takedown here. You know, a very, very shallow attempted guillotine. This is something you see so common when someone's attacking a takedown is to try and get the guillotine in order to try and get some control, some basis to defend the takedown. But you've got to make sure that your body's in the correct position when you do it. Right now, walking these legs very high. And this is something that that's a really effective way of attacking from the close guard position is if you have these long legs, use them, walk the legs high because think about it, when you're attacking, you're changing angles to attack arm bars or triangles. When your legs are low down towards the bottom of the opponent's hips, that's a, that's a relatively big distance to travel in order to attack something to change an angle. However, if you can lock off over one of the shoulders, even if both arms are still on the inside, but then your ability to cut the angle and attack an arm bar becomes much faster and therefore much more efficient. You know, we're not seeing too much in terms of uh, attacking off of the back of Stevie McIntosh here. Tying up one arm, always look the con whether the other wrist is being controlled for a possible triangle, but he's looking like he's just trying to control the posture, I think. From what I'm seeing right now, it looks like he's happy to try and control this and maybe hope for a, for a stand up. He open the legs and cut the angle a little bit for an arm bar there, and he uses the space to get back to the feet. Yeah, and there was a nice left, uh, nice right hand rather there from Figlak. As McIntosh got back to the feet, wasn't too clean, but certainly giving him something to think about. Figlak just loves walking his man back to the cage. Trying to cut those angles off. Using the jam to try and set the right hand up there. Figlak, of course, finding out of Worcester in the UK by way of Poznan in Poland. Of course, training along with his brother, Trojan Free Fighters under Paul Sutherland, a Cage Warriors original former world champion himself. McIntosh, of course, training out of higher level martial arts in Clackmanshire in Scotland. Another gym, the great pedigree here on Cage Warriors. Nice jab from McIntosh. Takes that kick on the arm, does Figlak. Figlak has not taken his eyes off McIntosh for the duration. Final 10 seconds of the first round. 
We're going to see a big finish from one of these guys. Fast and furious action in that first frame. Stevie McIntosh and Michael Figlak both getting in each other's faces early and staying there. Let's take a look back at some of the handiwork. Figlak powering forward there, but McIntosh punching his way back off the cage. It was the right hand by Figlak that created the entry to get the takedown. Our main card coming your way in, well, essentially just nine minutes' time, so this uh, preliminary fight may just crash into our main card broadcast, but rest assured, all the action will be live on UFC Fight Pass and international broadcast partners from 9.30, 8.30, rather, UK time this evening. Second round underway here. Kel Figlak, Stevie McIntosh. And again, it's Figlak taking the center of the cage and putting McIntosh with his back close to the fence, trying to close his man down. But McIntosh has looked really good fighting off the fence and you know using those long rangy kicks. Both guys landing again in the next change. There's a nice right hand there from McIntosh. And another. Figlak taking it on the chin, though. McIntosh looking like he's a, getting a little bit more comfortable in the second round now. Yeah. So the pressure being alleviated from Figlak. Certainly finding his rhythm in the second frame. Four minutes left to play with. Nice left hand there by Figlak. Oh, it's a huge combination, oh. and he's rocked. Figlak looking for the finish here, but he clinches up, gets the body lock. Very interesting decision when you have someone that hurt to slow the fight down, you, you know, and, and actually look, the control from here, really, really interesting decision. I'm wondering what's going through his head right now, because if you do take someone down once they're rocked, you want to then continue to open up and do more damage with some strikes. Figlak in a really strong position, inside control, under the pass straight to mount, finds himself in sort of half guard. You know, you've got to think that this was a, a bit of a tactical mistake there. When you have someone that badly hurt, continue to do what was hurting them in the first place. But he's kind of done, so often you see when someone's rocked is they'll shoot a takedown and try and get on the ground. Well, Figlak has done this for his opposition. Well, one thing we have seen from McIntosh is when he does get hit, he will fire back very quickly. So perhaps Figlak's seen that. He was wary of a counter coming through. You don't want to get caught steaming in, especially against the guy good in close range with the knees and the elbows. You know, it could just be like playing a really, really strategic game where he's thinking, OK, wow, I've rocked him. I take him down. I control the rest of this round for, for, for another two and a half minutes. And that's my round 100%. I've got this one in the bank. Coach James Doolan in the corner there. One of the top coaches on the circuit at the moment for my money. Shouting instructions there to Stevie McIntosh. And I'm pretty sure that's Figlak's brother in his corner over there as well with Paul Sutherland. He'll be fighting in... Uh, yeah, not too long time at all. He's <laughs> second fight in our main card. So, well, we have seen that from both brothers before. They have they have cornered each other when they fought on the same cards. I mean, when you're so close, you're gonna with your brother, training partner. There's no way you're gonna let him go out there and fight without you in his corner. So, even though it's kind of crazy, he's gonna be fighting in about half an hour. Um, you know, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, it, we talked about the story of these guys across this trilogy series and. and, and with the situation with people not being able to get into gyms these guys have been able to train together all the time they're within 10 pounds of weight of each other as well it's not like one of them's a flyweight one of them's a heavyweight so they, i'm sure they've been able to get some uh, fantastic rounds in the back garden shall we say uh, over this lockdown period so you know they really uh, possibly benefited from that time in a way that many fighters will have struggled 
Yeah, Fig like looking very comfortable to just win this round, basically. Happy to be on top. He's landing the strikes the entire time. His, his base is looking super solid here. That was a nice couple, couple of hits. You know, keeping the arms on the inside. Making small adjustments. You see how Stevie's looking to bring his hips out to the side to try and create some space. Whenever he brings his hips out to the side, Fig back immediately moving in the same direction and flattening his opponent back out. When you're on your back, for you to be able to do a lot of things, you want to get on your side. On your side, you're able to create angles and start to look from a, a, attack around the side. If your opponent keeps on moving towards that side, we can see if he's going to do it again. No, the legs are open now, but he was doing this before he gets a guard pass off of it, straight onto the back. 30 seconds to work here. It's a strong position. I'd probably look to, I said, I'd look to strike from here, but he's on the back and 20 seconds to go. Forearm is not quite under the neck, but it's around the face here into a body triangle. This is potentially going to be really close here. Stevie's got to hold on to one of these arms and just wait out the rest of the round. But yeah, really, really nice jumping on this back. And had there been a couple more minutes on the clock, who knows what could happen here. Wow, big lad. Coming close towards the end with that dangerous position on the back of Stevie McIntosh. That's a big round for Figlak and my instinct says that McIntosh is down here. He's still very much in it in that first frame. But the second round, great work from the Mad Dog. Dropped his man there early on. Landed a few nice follow-up shots. And I think it was just a situation there, Dan, where he just fell into that body lock position and it just seemed like the right thing to do. I mean, he, he's done very well out of it. He's 100% uh, won the round and maybe that's it. He's playing the long game. He respects the striking skills of his opponent. And, uh, you know, you can't you can't fault his performance for the remainder of that round after getting that, knock, you know, that, that, that uh, you know, rocking his opponent. Third and final round, Stevie the Major McIntosh. And then the Mad Dog, Mikhail Figlak. That cut man was nearly locked in the cage with them there for the third and final round. Not where I'd like to be. Yeah, well, you could tell he didn't want to be there either. I've never seen someone much, run much so safe, fast Much, much safer on this side <laughs> of the cage when you've got guys like Figlak and McIntosh throwing the heaters in there. Oh, big overhand right, just whistled past there from Figlak. Kicks to the body now. In a very similar vein to the first two rounds, he's walking McIntosh down, putting him on the back foot, putting him back up against the cage. Just limiting the ways that McIntosh can move forward into him. Still thrown with big power in this third frame is Figlak. Oh, and there's a nice combination. Teasing the high kick there was McIntosh. Ooh, looking for the big overhand right. Here's the Mad Dog. Figlak still walking his man down. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, joining us live on UFC Fight Pass and our other broadcast partners around the world. This is night two of Cage Warriors Double Trouble live from the iconic York Hall in London, England. My name's Brad Wharton, joined by Dan Strauss and the outlaw, Dan Hardy, here at Cageside. And we are in progress with our final preliminary bout of the night. The Mad Dog, Michael Figlak in the black, taking on the major, Stevie McIntosh. And this has been a pretty thrilling three-rounder so far. Figlak has been marching his man down, but giving as good as he gets is the major. Big Lack still launching those combinations, walking his man down onto the cage. McIntosh constantly having to circle away. 
but he's really not been able to get anything offensive going in this round so far. That's what we like to see from Figlak. Boxing his man in, throwing the hands. Excellent centre control from Figlak here, pushing his opponent back up against the fence. It's the same as we see from both the Figlak brothers. We'll be seeing his, his brother Mateus later on in the card. These prelims have certainly delivered. Yeah, it's been a fast and furious night so far here to cap off double trouble and to cap off the 2021 campaign for Cage Warriors. Of course, we've got a whole lot coming your way next year, but this is the last hurrah for 2021. And we've got some big fights coming your way on the main card this evening. For now, though, Figlak with 90 seconds left to play with, still walking down McIntosh, and it seems like McIntosh has fewer answers in this third round. Quite happy to stand right inside punching range is Figlak but he's even still able to get his head out of the way when his opponent returns. It's quite impressive. It must be frustrating for McIntosh. Sees his opponent right in front of him and he swings for him and he's just disappeared. Great range management. Let's see if Figlak can maybe mix it up a little bit in the final few seconds, maybe try and go to the body as well as McIntosh does try and use those long rangey straight shots. Ooh, spinning back with the tent there from Figlak. A couple of inches too short on that one. Final 30 seconds of the round. Figlak perhaps looking to earn some style points here. Crowd roaring them on. Nice combination from Figlak. And they're swinging now. Oh, Figlak landing a few oh. good shots here. He lands a right hand on McIntosh. McIntosh on his bike here. <laughs> Big Luck chasing him down like a mad dog. And he really wants to get the finish at the end of that round. That was a great finish to the prelims. Mikhail Fidlak setting the tone for his brother to step onto the main card. Big like celebrating with his brother in the cage there. His brother will be fighting in probably it's about half an hour's time and he's out in the corner with Paul Sutherland. That's that's commitment. Well, that's his warm-up right there. The adrenaline's already pumping and everything for his brother. You know, sometimes I like to be in a corner it's the same night as I'm fighting. And uh, with Paul Sutherland there as well, you know, a, a, a wealth of mixed martial arts knowledge. What a great corner team. Well, the scorecards are being tallied. Our MC, Mr. Hal Chaplin, will make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. Your judges score this contest 30-27, 30-27, and 30-26 for your winner by way of unanimous decision in the red corner, Mikhail Mad Dog Figlak. The Mad Dog Mikhail Figlak still undefeated.